Uh, today we've got Neil Richter from Rubicon Project. Come in today. Thanks for coming in, Neil. Thank you. For, for those kind of, we, we, I think we've done previous episodes where we've kind of had an overview, but like just define the deal ID and sort of how it powers sort of private marketplaces in, in, in Corn Ace. Sure. Like, I kind of like to work from the inside out. Um, you know, at, at the core of all of this is, is the yeah. RTV protocol. Uh, around the RTV protocol is essentially an order. Yeah. Essentially, this is what's happening. Is what's actually happening is that uh, there's an order which is, which is trying to buy inventory. Mm -hmm. And most orders are composed of an order which contains a lot of metadata, flight dates, those sort of things, and then a line item. And a line item is kind of the lowest granularity of unit, uh, generically speaking, that contains an independent budget. Mm -hmm. Each line item may have independent budget from the others to have an independent frequency cap, generally independent targeting. So in some sense, one interpretation of the deal ID is that it's synonymous with the line item. Right. So what is a deal ID? It's just a string. Yeah. It's a unique token, a string token, that's passed on the bid call to the bidders. And it should be interpreted as a targetable unit. So ideally, within a DSP system and an SSP system or exchange system, impressions are classified into a deal ID based upon selling rules. And then that is made as a targetable unit, say just like country mm. on a line item. Mm. So then a line item essentially targets, you know, country, user, what have you, as well as deal ID, and then to that essentially line item attaches, and then bids are generated mm. if it's time to bid. And this uh, this power sort of the uh, private marketplace. How, so how how does that work? How does that sort of work together? Great question. I mean, in the beginning, RTV was about essentially. Exposing an impression to multiple uh, multiple bidders, multiple mm. buyers, and decentralizing a lot of the mechanics of buying and selling, right? But it was about individual impressions, like individual grains of rice that yeah. are being auctioned yeah. off. Deal ID and private marketplaces are about packaged inventory, right? So what we've done with a product called RevConnect is form the marketplace of packaged inventory. So publishers can come in and create an inventory package. Yeah. And that inventory package is a site, a placement, um, a country. Essentially, it's a it's a bucket of inventory mm -hmm. that's kind of well formed and well described. And then demand partners can, can can adopt that and say, yes, we'd like to buy some of this. We'd like to take it and maybe tweak it a little and propose some additional layers of targeting on it, mm -hmm. and essentially conduct a deal. Right, agree on a price, have a conversation, uh, and then you, you essentially strike an order and a deal ID is generated. And that deal ID goes out to both systems for execution. Mm. So in some sense, RTB and the, with the deal ID extensions are the microeconomic protocol and the order automation is the macroeconomic protocol. And, and in, in, in terms of what, what it's resolving, the problems it resolves, I mean, what, what what is this doing for publishers in terms of sort of uh, increased CPMs, et cetera, I mean, versus the, the old system of selling in, in real time? Well, the old system of selling is, is one where... Well, not so old, but obviously... But like yeah, <laughs> publishers, well, the current system of selling yeah. with RTB is publishers take uh, placements, ad units, slots, whatever your name is, and post them to RTB. And then the individual impressions go out, you know, to some exchange, Right? And then they're offered to multiple DSPs. Yeah. But it's an individual impression. The association is lost that this was part of essentially this well-organized piece of inventory. Mm. It's lost because ultimately what ends up happening predominantly today is that this impression is just described by a URL. So it's just tonnage basically. URL out to the DSP. Yeah. Most DSPs are built on the basis of URL targeting in yeah. addition to country and user yeah. and those other things. What we haven't done a good job of in industry is making it based on how the publisher organizes it. So it's almost as if the way that the publisher posts their inventory to the exchange is completely different from how 
the DSP, the DSP is typically five units, right? Not the DSP, it's the buyers on the DSP. So there's a bit of impedance. So one, you know, one thing that DLID does is kind of clear the decks on that and allow the buyers and sellers to, you know, conduct a transaction on the basis of a well-formed piece of inventory that's described. And then the onus is on the, the seller to make sure that the right inventory is associated with the DLID. The onus is on the buyer to recognize the DLID and say, all right, we have, a, we have a, an agreed upon order here. We're going to execute it at this time. And is it all done in real time? And uh, you say, is DLID going to be involved in programmatic guaranteed as well? Or is it's it just a crucial? Crucial. It's crucial for programmatic guarantee to work. Uh, we, there needs to be a central token yeah. that's exchanged. In some sense, with the extensions to our, the RTB protocol, with DLID, we've changed the semantic of the protocol. It's, yeah. it's, it's transitioned from being about an auction per se to uh, a real-time signaling protocol that an impression is in or out of a deal. So you might actually look at the ad server stack as evolving to be kind of multiple layered. Down here, you've got open auction. Okay. In the middle, you have the kind of first look, first right mm -hmm. deals. And up here at the top is essentially private inventory. Right. Right. So things exist at these three levels. So this is necessary. DLID is necessary for this to prosper, in our view. And will that so it's a standardization of how this works. Well, so we'll just it'll just cover this private and first look and first refusal type. Okay. Um, so I mean, in, in sense of how it works, I mean, well, how it works in programmatic guarantee, will will it be sort of um, a push to the, the ad server, or how how do you sort of how will that process work? Will it just be like a static buy, or how how is sort of a, that work in terms of sort of the DLD? Yeah, sequence of decisions. Uh, so at, at time one, the impression comes in. Impression comes into the exchange. At time two, uh, the impression is essentially marked up. Yeah. It's decomposed from being this HTTP request into an RTB request. And along with that is additional markup. Country, uh, the site, the placement, mm -hmm. uh, if it's provided, and the deal ID. So you've got you know IP of the user, user uh, agent, uh, user identifier, etc. Then at time, at time three, this is essentially exposed to the buy side. Exposed to bidding. Okay. And then essentially at time four, it's time for the bidders to execute their strategy. Mm. And the optimal algorithm needs to look at combination of factors. One is, is this impression eligible for all buyers or just the private set of buyers? And, and that needs to be looked at. The next thing is you have to look at the line items and you have to say, are these hungry or are they on pace? Mm. Which ones, which, which one or which set do we want to bid with, right? So then essentially the buying logic executes, okay? And then bids are determined and then they're sent back the exchange runs an auction. And this auction is probably gonna to evolve to be a hybrid auction. Right. Where we've got those three levels again. Right, okay. So this is the this is the top level kind of okay. what happens in what's taken. Okay. All right. Um, and, and how does open art to be sort of fit into this uh, fit into sort of DID and sure. how it works? Just to explain that briefly. Sure. So the you know the core extensions to OpenRTB that are being proposed and they're in proposal phase now uh, is, is essentially this. OpenRTB is a protocol that's just a box of objects. Yeah. And what we're at, what we're adding here is a PMP box. Okay. And it's and it has uh, two two main components. private flag and another box that's deals. So it's, it's an array. Mm. 
right? It's, it's, it, this, this box contains uh, uh, other boxes. It, it's an array of objects. And each deal object is composed of an ID. And this is just a string that is going to be used as a central piece of targeting. It has to be unique. Can't, can't uh, reuse strings. A floor. This is just a price. And things that the industry calls seats. This is just the buyers. Okay. The allowed buyer or set of buyers yeah. for this deal. Yeah. And then the impression will come with a list of these. Yeah. However many are eligible for this particular impression. So this is going to be information that you pass between the buyer, seller and buyer in yes. real time. This is, this is on the and request. In the string. Right. Okay. In, 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 in the string. Right. But essentially what we're doing is we're standardizing how this is passed and then we're going to provide, or at least I would like to provide as part of the standard implementation guidelines. Mm. And we're gonna, we're gonna you know, try and make these as, as, as part of the standard. And the implementation guidelines define best practices of how you interpret the object. Yeah. We've, we've gone out there, you know, Rubicon has a private RTP protocol in addition mm -hmm. to the open mm -hmm. RTP protocol. And we've been working on this and we've gone to all the major DLID, or DLID implemented DSPs mm. and have done a bidding logic review with them. In order to you know figure out to what extent uh, the protocol has been well defined on our side and their side and also well implemented because the objective of the deal ID is that in some sense the exchange and the DSP should fade into the background a bit and that we're order we're executing a buyer and a seller's order so mm. that's the job of the protocol and the job of the two systems is to execute someone else's order so as part of our normal process of, of um, working with them, we've, you know, we've done this kind of technical review. And as a result of that technical review, we've developed a, what we think is an ideal algorithm, okay. very top level. So the ideal algorithm is, 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 is pretty basic. First, you essentially uh, parse the request. Uh, the next thing you do is you check for the existence of the PMP object. So look for PMP object. Okay? Right. Uh, the third, you know, the, the third step is that you do matching. So for each one of the deals in this list, you want to execute a matching algorithm where you're essentially trying to find line items virtual line items, mm -hmm. so to speak, in that system that will attach to these to these opportunities. Right? Okay. <clears throat> uh, the zero step here is you create an empty list of bits. Well, that's important. An empty list of bits. So you, you execute matching. And the job of the matching algorithm is to match against the ID, the seats, and the floor. And it's the job of the bidder to execute this set of things as well as evaluate the targeting to make sure that the rest of the stuff that, that's not on the board in the, in the open RTP protocol is matched and that the buying system completely, uh, the buying agent's job to do this is to make sure that it's on pace, yeah. that, the, that the pacing of the spend or the pacing of the impressions is correct that the impression, this particular impression, is the one that they want to buy according to some audience mm -hmm. variable that could be private. So w why should the industry adopt this? I mean, this is obviously, uh, you know, this is an attempt by a lot of vendors to, to, to create a standardized uh, process. Is that the reason why it should be adopted? Is that, is that be Because we define the standard. Anytime you define a protocol, a protocol is just a way to share information. Now mm -hmm. we have to define a way to interpret mm -hmm. what the information is. Okay. So it's matching. And then essentially append matched bids. And notice that this inherently is a multi bidding protocol, yeah. right? We're talking about multiple bids. Because the principle with deal ID bidding is that it's not about one bid. What we want to do is bring better liquidity to, more bids. to the auction yeah. and get more bids. Because there's a, there's a bi-directional arrangement here between the systems. 
The job of the selling system is to enable as much demand as possible, and the job of the buying system is to make sure that all of those orders are being represented mm. in the in the auction and in, in, in essentially the order execution environment, right? So you need to be essentially liberal about what you send. So we append match bids, and then the fifth step is where kind of the current state of RTB comes into place. First thing you do is you look at private. You essentially say if private is false, then this impression, the intention on the part of the seller was that this impression is actually open to all buyers, right? And then you essentially run, run uh, your generic RTB bidding algo. And then ideally, append bids to the same list and then send. So we've harmonized from here the deal ID bidding process and then the open marketplace bidding process. And we're kind of saying that the ideal bidding logic can be kind of characterized as an M plus N bidder. Up to M deal ID bids yeah. and N open marketplace bids. Okay. The minimum standard is one plus one. Right. If you have an impression enabled for open marketplace bidding and deals are eligible for the impression, that you want to do a one plus one bidding behavior. Mm -hmm. and, a, and a couple of the DSPs have implemented this. But not all. Not all. Uh, <clears throat> you know, the, the most effective way is actually going to be M plus two. Right. Where it is M deal ID bids, whichever match, mm -hmm. and two or more bids to deal with blocking. Okay. So, you know, plenty of people have talked about uh, the, you know, the, the the importance of multi-bidding from the perspective of the open auction. Uh, Jordan Mitchell and I wrote an article about a year ago yep. uh, talking about that. It's about returning full liquidity to the auction, and it's also about getting over basic impedance and friction, which is blocking. On our platform, different bidders will see varying rates of blocking. So what's happening is, is these algorithms, algorithms are not terribly smart. They only do exactly what you, the code only does exactly what was intended. And what we see a lot is just bidding the same thing over and over again and getting blocked every single time uh, by, by blocking rules. And if the, and if the buyer, if the, if the bidder essentially system has not implemented the blocking API, the easiest thing to do is to send multiple bids. Mm. And our exchange actually has an interesting feature that two bids from the same seat holder, i.e. the people that own the budget, will never second price themselves. So that removes one of the um, frictions to doing multi-bidding is people don't want to second price their own buys. Mm. Auction theory basically says that in order for the auction to be optimal and for floors to lower and for liquidity to rise, uh, you, need, you essentially need all buyers to be represented in the auction. And that, 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 that's buyers, not necessarily bids. Okay. So multi-bidding is, is, is required. And it's especially required for deal ID. So, you know, we, we've discovered some anti-patterns in, in the software that, that get in the way. You know, the first one is running an internal auction. So This is an internal auction on the DSP side. Internal auction on the DSP side. As soon as you enter, you know, as soon as you, you, you talk about uh, deal ID based bidding, the implication is, is that what the buyer and the seller have intended is for the bids to come across. So if you're subjecting uh, all of the bids to an internal auction on price, mm. you may be suppressing the deal ID bids yeah. in favor of open marketplace bids. Yeah. Even though the exchange has every intention of essentially possibly prioritizing those bids. Yeah. So internal auction uh, is, is one issue. Uh, one of the other kind of anti-patterns is associating the deal ID to the wrong object, okay. right? You know, we talked before about ideally a deal ID is a, is a unit of targeting that you look at as a targeting token just like the country. 
if what you do is is you associate a, a, a deal ID to an advertiser or only to an exchange or <clears throat> to the order itself, you've essentially hampered the flexibility of it. So that's been that's been a major uh, issue. So wrong uh, object. Let's see. So one of the, the third anti patterns is improper treatment of seats. Okay. Basically, treating seats as a filter for all bids, right? If you yeah. pass in two seats, then you know what's happened in uh, some of the bidders that we've we've, we've gone and reviewed is that uh, the DSP assumes that what's actually the DSP's algorithms have have made the assumption that only those seats are eligible to bid, even if the private flag is false. Like if the private flag is false, then basically the seller is saying I'm open to everyone mm. uh, to bid, but deal ID bids, bids may be prioritized. So are we are we close to resolving these problems then? I mean, are we close to kind of uh, fix these and then... We've been working with right. um, all of the, the DSPs and, and have done this, this logic review. Yeah. And have, uh, our, our, you know, the product teams and our uh, product teams and engineering teams are working pretty tightly together to kind of smooth out these wrinkles. Because deal ID is working today. There's just some wrinkles and so we're just trying to iron those okay. out. Neil, that was a very in-depth uh, overview, uh, well it's not even an overview, in-depth sort of uh, analysis of Open OTB and DLID. Thank you very much for coming in today. Sure. And that was Trader Talk TV. See you next week. Cheers. Cheers.